his actions and who he was, like, so up. Is there still bad blood between Kim Kardashian and Tristan Thompson after he repeatedly cheated on her sister? Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson were a major topic of discussion in this week's episode of The Kardashians. Access Hollywood is breaking down the top moments from the episode, including Kim's update on how she feels about Tristan now. Oh, I know you guys are gonna hate me for this and you're gonna hate us and you're gonna think Chloe's whatever. It's so crazy because he's such a good friend and he's such a good like dad, but he just couldn't get it together in that area of like being a faithful boyfriend. <laughs> so it's like, you wanna obviously hate him for that. Yeah, of course, his actions and who he was like so up, like I can't deny that. And we've had our talks about it and we've had our fights about it and we've had our arguments about it, but he's also shown so many decent things and just has been a really good person and friend. The makeup mogul then revealed how Tristan stepped up while she was going through her divorce from ex-husband Kanye West. When he saw me struggling with my kids, he stepped up. He started showing up to the games. He picks Zane up, takes him to dinner, and will always come to my defense, especially if it's stuff with like me and my ex. And I just like never forgot that. So it's like I'll never really throw someone away and act like I don't feel like they can grow and evolve. Kim's current relationship with Tristan is a major shift. She had been an outspoken critic of the NBA star in the past, and he even blocked her on Instagram briefly, but they have managed to turn a new leaf. As for Chloe, she had a candid conversation with her ex about their past, and he told the Good American co-founder he never wants his kids to feel ashamed of his actions. You know, true's understanding stuff, Prince understand things where they go to school and they have classmates like, the last thing I want them to do is ever feel embarrassed that I'm their father. As for the mistakes he's made, Tristan says he is still trying to understand why he put Chloe through so much pain. I think um, going down this journey that I've been on right now, especially with, you know, having to my mom, um, I always ask myself, you know, like, why, why do certain things to hurt certain people? I think the thing that always sticks to my mind, it's like, I know how much I care about you. you know, I, I know how much I love you. You're my best friend. How come I, like, I meet my person? How come I've done so much wrong things to them? Like, why, 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 why put you through that? Later on in a confessional, Chloe admits it's hard to hear Tristan call her his person. Tristan has said before, like, I'm his person. I'm not saying I don't believe him, but I've heard this. And of course it's angered me before because I'm like, well, if I am, then why would you have treated me this way? And how many times, you know, like it's, this isn't like, oh, a one-time thing and here we are. Like I, I love love and I am a hopeless romantic, but that's not gonna change how I feel and what happened. However, despite what happened between the two of them, Chloe is staying by Tristan's side as he mourns the death of his mother, Andrea, who passed away in January, and as he takes care of his younger brother, Amari, who has epilepsy. I want to be good for the lifetimes after this. I want my karma just to always be great. And I'm not justifying anything you've done. I mean, obviously, everything you did was... Oh, yes, my decision. This is up. Yeah. And I'm strong enough that it's not going to break me, and God knows that. Mm -hmm. But also, Tristan, if what you say is true, if like you really thought I was your person or whatever you just said, then that means you'll feel this much more affected by losing me and want to change for yourself, mm -hmm. not because there's a prize at the end of it. We're going to be in each other's lives for the rest of each other's lives because of our kids. So I'm not going to fight that. And we're, I'm going to make sure it's as nice as possible yeah. for me. It's evident Chloe is continuing to be a helping hand for Tristan during the difficult time as he navigates Amari's health challenges. Amari is Tristan's little brother. He is 16 years old. He is wheelchair bound. 
Amari has the most severest type of epilepsy. He has the worst type of seizures you can have, and he was having so many before a day that it's caused such severe brain damage, and that's why he can't walk or talk or any of that stuff. He's in a really like scary place, because once he hits age 20 is when it will be really bad if we can't have any improvements. Amari has clearly become an important member of the Kardashian-Jenner family, so much so that Kris Jenner got emotional while talking about his health struggles during a confessional. Amari is teaching us a lot of life lessons. Yeah. Because when you meet Amari, he becomes part of your soul. And you can't understand how this happened or why this happened. So hopefully it teaches my family that, you know, life is a beautiful thing. The fact that my kids, especially Chloe, have stepped up to this extraordinary challenge is a beautiful thing. I'm really proud of Chloe. The episode didn't just focus on Chloe and Tristan. It also highlighted Kim's social justice reform efforts by showing her meeting Kevin Keith, a man who was convicted of a triple homicide and is serving a life sentence in Ohio. I love meeting someone that I'm fighting for face to face. There's nothing better. Although cameras weren't allowed inside the prison, Kim explained in a confessional what it was like finally meeting him. Being able to give Kevin a hug and being able to see him and sit with him face to face, there was no glass, he wasn't shackled. You know, first and foremost, he's been sitting here telling his story and fighting for his life for 28 years inside. It was just really nice to know that I've been fighting for the person that I really believed I've been fighting for. And to really look him in the eyes and really understand, that's just the best feeling. When she isn't fighting for social justice, Kim is getting her ass up and heading to Harvard. What? Like it's hard? Kim was invited to give a lecture at Harvard Business School about skims and her experience as an influencer. While she was all business at Harvard, Kim isn't afraid to let loose. During the episode, the 42-year-old admitted she got more than a little tipsy dancing at a party thrown by Beyonce. I'm definitely still a lightweight. I'll have like two shots and I'll be wasted. And it's so much fun. I'll be dancing on the dance floor. Seriously, I know you guys don't believe me. Ask Beyonce. I danced all night long at her party. <laughs> I think I blacked out. <laughs> In fact, Kim had so much fun at the party that she had people texting her about it the following night. I woke up to so many text messages and I was like, Chloe, look at this. What did I do? What did I do? And she's like, you were dropping it low and dance. And I was like, no, I just, <laughs> I had no idea. Kim isn't the only one letting loose. Chris and Corey Gamble are having fun too. The pair got candid about their sex life in the episode, admitting they once had sex on the beach in the Maldives. Remember that drink, sex on the beach? And you could walk up to somebody and go, do you want a sex on the beach? Do you want to try a right. sex on the beach? We you can did have the that. drink or the real deal? Well, not in this beach, but we did it in the Maldives. Yeah, we did. Yeah, not, not in L.A. County. I don't, I'm not into that one. Okay. Out here, we'll get canceled. Oh, we'll get arrested. 